Audi A4 2 litre TDI. Now it's in with us for a remap today. Right, so finally after having a few issues running this vehicle, I crashed from there to there. I'm going to try the, the outer one now and if that works then we will have one in each of the two ends and that that should give us a uh, that should give us a seal for now i haven't got a short right angle drill um so i've actually i've had to uh, file down a drill bit to fit it into an adapter on on our little uh, right angle um battery ratchet so that's doing the job for now modification yeah four three two Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Darren Evans and this is PD Performance. Today we've got this, in fact I hadn't even checked before I looked around, Audi A4 2 litre TDI. Now it's in with us for a remap today. So we actually offer most of our customers these days the opportunity to go on the hub dyno and see what actual gains they're achieving from a remap. So the ability of that is to produce a before and an after figure for the customer to accurately understand exactly what horsepower they've gained and now this is a hub dyno so it's a little bit different to a rolling road so it actually measures from the wheels themselves they're directly bolted to the hub of the vehicle um, via the adapter that's on the equipment and we can give them an absolutely accurate figure now any calculation as always at the flywheel is a calculation based upon losses and a conversion rate losses through the uh, transmission of the vehicle now that's never an exact science so take everything with a pinch of salt but what we're going to do today is we're going to actually do some basic diagnostic on the vehicle in this instance we're going to use vagcom because it's a dealer specific tool and we've got that equipment at our disposal before we actually tune the vehicle go ahead and tune the vehicle after obviously uh, mounting the hubs to the, where the wheels used to be so the hubs of the vehicle itself and then finding out exactly what horsepower this car has got because obviously it's a 2010 vehicle so it will have lost a bit of power over the years so we'll then move on to tuning it and finally um, assessing exactly what we've achieved making sure that the car is fine um, and dandy ready for the customer to collect hopefully we'll produce some good figures we'll talk to you in a little while about exactly what we think we can achieve from this car and let's see what we can do um, but for now i'll leave you to it and uh, we'll get on with loading the car on the hub itself Right, so what Ben's doing now is just clearing all the previous runs from the software itself. We actually run your dyno software, which is um, probably one of the most well-known and used um, independent kind of softwares that's on the market now. A lot of other um, dyno users, I suppose you'd call them, are actually switching over to this software or the sports devices software just because it's more one more user-friendly, two um more accurate overall um and, and just a bit better really of a solution um so yeah basically ben's just setting the software up ready putting some settings in there is a little bit or a few differences on the way in which you run every single vehicle and the way that the software is set up isn't it ben whilst you're trying to move that across from there to there that's one annoying thing obviously we've got an extended screen and it's a bit difficult with that uh, wireless setup to move it across but there's a few differences in the way that you set up for every single car isn't there Ben? Yeah there is. Can you talk and be angry at the same time about that not moving across? Yeah. Can you? No problem. The, the, the look on your face of grimace versus smile is says differently. Anyway um, yeah so there's a little bit of differences in terms of the settings for each one. Yeah so we need to tell the dyno that we're running a, uh, a diesel car today to start with that's uh, so that so that it can do the um, the ambient changes that are required, um, and then we've got to set 
sort of the gear ratios and everything for every single car that goes on the dyno as well, just to make sure that we're getting an accurate reading. Um, and we also tell it sort of what kind of RPM limits there are and stuff on the car so that the dyno can stop logging at, at sort of roughly the right kind of time. So this isn't just a, like, you know, just check any car on. It's the same with the rolling road as well. You can't just put a car on and then put another different type of car on and another one and not have to change everything. Everything's set. So the, the gear ratio or the lock ratio is set for every single vehicle. On rolling roads, there's different lock ratios that you can choose for different uh, different different engine types isn't it Ben so you've got a four, four cylinder lock you've got a six cylinder a eight cylinder a ten cylinder on this one on this specific software it's not it's not dissimilar but you actually lock the dyno in at a specific rpm so it's got the ratio there but I'm going to let Ben carry on with moving this onto the second screen and we'll come back to you in just a minute either that or the keyboard will be over there so not so many of you will have seen this before, but I just thought I'd run quickly through it again. These hubs have been lined up with the connectors on the wheels. They've been attached via the wheel studs to um, the hub itself. And then there's an opposing connection to on the uh, hub dyno itself. There's three dowels that locate it quite easily with the use of some air and the jacks that remain underneath the vehicle at all times. There's three fixings that are screwed in. They're Allen key style fixings that uh, join the two uh, couplings together or the hubs together. Um, and then we've got independent eddy brakes in each of the hubs. So this uh, equipment is actually suitable for measuring up to about 2000 horsepower at the flywheel, which is about 1600-ish at the hub. So it's more than capable of easily measuring this Audi A4. So what we're going to do now is do the initial kind of running up of the vehicle, get the vehicle warm, get the first measurement taken on stock power. And then once we've uh, installed the software, we'll come back and we'll run it again and see what we've achieved and have a bit of chat with you once we've done all the testing that is necessary. So join us in a minute when we'll come back to you and show you the stock figures. Right, so what we're doing now is Ben saving this original, um, basically printout, I suppose is more what you'd call it, so that we can give the customer a before and after without them all appearing on the same graph. So what we've actually achieved is about 124 brake horsepower at the wheels. So that roughly equates, if you calculate it, 12% losses to uh, 140, which is what this was stock. If you equate it to what we normally use, which is about 15% losses, then it's just over that, about 146 or something like that. Anyway, for the, all intents and purposes, all we're trying to gauge is the gain, so we can do that at the wheels anyway. What we're going to do from here on in is that Ben's going to write the file, aren't you? Yeah. So we've done, as I said before, we've done um, an initial um, read of the vehicle and alongside that we've also checked for any faults so this so oh, this file is going to go off now for modification we'll wait for the original to come back we'll install it by the OBD is it on this one Ben I assume uh, yeah OBD yeah so virtual read so it's a virtual read what we mean by that is that um, the tool itself just detects the software number of the original file and then we get a tuned file based upon that software number. Um, it is a bit complicated but for those of you that understand you'll appreciate that. So we'll wait for the software to come back, we'll load it onto the vehicle and we'll do another further dyno run to produce um, or to see what this vehicle actually produces and come back to you and let you know exactly what we've gained and um, we'll go from there.
Right, so finally, after having a few little minute issues running this vehicle, we can now tell you that the tuned file actually produced about 30, 32 brake horsepower at the wheels, which equates to roughly about 35 brake horsepower, which is the quoted figure anyway. So we've gone from 124 horsepower all the way to 154, 155 brake horsepower, and we've achieved an impressive increase in uh, torque as well to to mirror that really you can see as well by the um by the graphs that we've got in the background that you've got a more progressive and more sustained power across the graph as well which is going to make it more drivable but ultimately realistically the big thing that's going to create the improvement is approximately 70 newton meters of torque additional um, that we've gained with this particular file so that's going to give you the actual punch so overall level of happiness for the customer i'd imagine it's going to be significant um, realistically although the tuning gains in brake horsepower are small as a percentage of the whole that's over 20 percent that we've increased in power over stock so yes is this worthwhile i suppose is the question yes it is this is just refining the the power and drivability of the vehicle especially with a diesel car um, and the increase in torque that you get is just immense really that's 25 30, well 25 boarding on 30 percent i haven't done the calculations my math's terrible at the minute but 30 percent probably actually um thinking about it now logically uh 30 percent increase in torque so I'm happy with it, Ben's happy with it. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. We just thought we'd give you a little bit of an insight into exactly what goes into this, um, into tuning a vehicle and proving the gains. This is something that not everybody can do um, and it's a, another weapon in our arsenal, as it were, to demonstrate that our files are good. So if you enjoy this sort of content, then please consider subscribing, hit that bell icon to stay notified, Comment down below if we missed something or if there's another vehicle that you'd like to see tuned in this way on the dyno. We'll see if we can do that for you. Let us know what, if, what you'd like to see in future videos and what you liked about other videos. Again, in the comments down below. My name's Darren Evans. This has been BD Performance and thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one, guys. It's always a mad rush. Kerry never gives us any time to do anything. We knocked him in a rush, the swans kick off at three o'clock, you've got no chance. I don't want to be on camera. I, know, I don't yeah. do cameras. Have a set of um, five more injectors, they said. Yeah, cracking idea that was. It'll be fun. Yeah. I'm not even doing that. I'm not even doing that. What did they say? Pop, pop, bang, bang.